Hey, good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. We got a uh, little something different here on the Uncle Bullgator channel for this video. Uh, we're gonna take this disgusting Super E. Look at this. It's gonna, I don't know if it's gonna grab it or not. There we go. Look how nasty this thing is. Now, uh, I wanna be upfront with you guys that I've never, ever messed with a carburetor before. I've had carburetor bikes, but uh, they've never given me any trouble. So we're gonna take this thing, uh, we're gonna rebuild it. I ordered a master rebuild kit from JP Cycles. I ordered uh, a jet kit as well. I ordered some intake seals, we're gonna do that at the end. I actually meant to record taking this thing off the motorcycle, but uh, you know how it is, man. I was in there the other night and uh, just checking to see if I had the right tools for things. and messing around, drinking beers, listening to Skinner. Next thing you know, the carburetor's in my hand. So I've got a couple of videos that uh, I have watched a few times just to kind of make sure I got things right. I will be referencing them throughout the video. I'll try to link those below. I've used the SNS official video. Uh, I've used a couple of guys out there that, that go through these rebuilds and talk about the factory settings. So yeah, with that, let's get right to it, I guess. All right, if you guys remember about a year and a half ago, I made this tool roll. So far, uh, working on bikes, I haven't really needed much else outside of what I've packed in that tool roll. I got that from John Maxwell. All right, let's open this thing up. I don't 100% know what I'm looking for. All right, we've got these s, &S intake seals. Don't need those quite yet. This is a high range jet kit. Um, somebody said you should probably look at low range and uh, I could have gotten both, I guess, or the master jet kit, but uh, I think I think this is going to be fine with the with the high range. So we've got increased airflow on the motorcycle, and we've got um, we've got a cam in it. So this one starts at 72, I believe, and on the main jet, and starts at 29.5 on the intermediate jet, which is exactly what the recommendations are from SNS anyway. So we're going to start with that and go from there. Look at all these little pieces and parts. Uh, I do like this. Uh, my specific Super E has a fixed position. Looks like it comes with new screws. That's a good thing. All right, we're gonna do this kind of in stages. Uh, this is our master rebuild kit. This is everything, man. Look at this. That's crazy. All right, we are gonna start with the float bowl. We're gonna work bottom up. I'm gonna get the float bowl completely done and then um, move on to the car body. There are, um, there are four screws. I got this parts cleaner over here. Uh, I am gonna utilize that parts cleaner, but only on the things that are gonna be reused. I almost, almost went in and bought uh, an ultrasonic cleaner, but ultimately changed my mind. All right, there's, the, there's a video out there that shows which of these two screws to take off, but if you use a little bit of deductive reasoning, you can, you can kind of figure it out. This little screw here doesn't go anywhere. So it's clearly just to hold this accelerator pump cap off so it's got to be this one all right let's see if i can get this float bowl off i can get this float bowl off look at that Ooh, baby all right adjusted the camera angle a little bit we're gonna take this float bowl drain out i already did that the other day these uh these gaskets are definitely not in the best shape i'm not sure what happened to this o-ring now this bike is running rich i was watching another video somebody rocco or something he fixed his rich problem just by changing out the O-ring. I don't see the O-ring for this. And you know, maybe it came off somewhere and I don't see it. That's kind of wild to me. Like it's just not there. <laughs> just that alone might fix it. You know, we're gonna take this needle valve out. All right, I had to go uh, get some tools and I forgot to turn this back on. I've taken the accelerator pump apart. We're gonna get these little O-rings off. I'm setting everything over here. There's also uh, a little spring on this side. And then a little ball bearing that goes in each one of these holes. So we're gonna take this completely apart so I can clean it. Now the problem that I'm having, also the problem that I had uh, the other day on float bowl drain out initially was that somebody has gorilla torque this thing. Uh, what I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to disappear again. Um, I was going to clean this stuff with this parts cleaner right here. But since I'm going to be working on this area, I don't think I want to do that. I don't want to mess up my cleaning area. So I'm actually going to go to the other side of the house, uh, get this stuff cleaned down with this rag and this brush 
and I'll blow it off with some air. Yeah, we'll see you when we get back. All right, boys. I, you know, I just realized looking in this uh, monitor here that the sunlight's coming in at this really weird angle, but I don't really have a workspace that's um, out of the sun. I got this thing pretty clean. I, I should have highlighted where some of the dirt was collecting. Uh, one thing I did do while I was out there, this is for the accelerator pump, and it's got this slit. Uh, the guy Rocco called it a smiley face, and it points backward, you know, so it squirts gas. I did stick this uh, cleaner through this little hole, made sure it sprayed out. It does, it looks fine. So I guess with that, we will get to the um, accelerator pump. All right, this one has a spring. Actually, I'm gonna put these O-rings in first. All right, now this uh, apparently can get pinched pretty easy. You're gonna put this lip facing up because it's gonna seat. Oh, I should have taken this out, clean it. Uh, I'm gonna have to clean this up, son of a bitch. Okay. All right, guys, the sun is going to uh, bother us both. I know it's not the most ideal lighting condition. I'm not gonna take this outside. I'm just gonna spray it over here to the side. I do have a couple of windows open. I'm gonna take my brush, see if I can knock off any of the loose shit. Bam, it has been years since, thing has been, since this thing has been given any love. I wanna get these parts that go um, where these check valves are with these ball bearings. I wanna make sure those are especially clean. I don't wanna create any gaps there. Well, the trick is making sure that, pretty sure I got that. Yeah, all you gotta do is kinda of wiggle it a little bit and it looks like it's in there pretty good. Okay, we'll take that. Guys, I'm sweating so bad from sitting in this sun. And these windows are like magnifying glasses. I picked a really bad spot. All right, I probably should have done this from the beginning. Oh, it's much better for both of us. You can probably see a hell of a lot better. All right, this has already got an O-ring on it. Put this bad boy in here. Now, the last person had this thing Gorilla Torque. I am gonna make it sure it's nice and snug, but there's no reason to uh, crank that baby down, you know what I mean? All right, let's get this guy on here and measure this needle valve. All right, so we can stick this in here, lock this down. I want it to be locked down while I measure. There we go. Lock this puppy down. Now, because I'm following directions from a YouTube video, I'm doing it exactly like he says. So we're, we're pulling this up to its highest point, and then this gasket surface here, because it, it, it comes down here, this gasket surface, we're gonna measure uh, the distance from this gasket surface to the float pole. And uh, like I said, I wish I had a metal ruler, but I don't. So we're gonna use this tape measure, which um, is supposed to be, be between 1 8 and 3 16 It's exactly between 1 8 and 3 16 Holy smokes. You might say, yeah, but you gotta account for this. Well, this particular measuring tape starts here. Not all of them do that, but this particular one does. So I believe it's already accounted for. Can't forget this guy. I 100% think this thing is not, not on that carburetor. And that could very well be 100% what is causing my rich issue. Let's pull this O-ring off. I got another one there in the rebuild kit. Surprised they didn't send a new drain plug with all the new shit they sent, you know what I mean? Hell yeah. All right. Oh, boy, you guys almost seen me make a big mistake here, didn't you? Put this guy on there, there we go. Like I said, no need to Gorilla Torque it. Just gonna tighten it up, there we go. Now we're gonna call the bottom half of this uh, carburetor float bowl. We're gonna call this float bowl good to go. All right, now to the body of the carb. Let's take this uh, gasket off. I don't have to be so ginger with it because I have a new one. Um, we're gonna take this jet out. I don't like how they have, they've, they've got this thing all marred up in here. And I don't think it's supposed to be in there that tight. This is a 72, like I said. Let's see if I can see through there. It's not clogged, that's a good thing. Let's take this intermediate jet out. Uh, I think I bought these jets with the understanding that if I didn't need them, then I was gonna return them. But seeing the condition of, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe I just have a, a better feeling if, yeah, this is completely, this one's clogged. Okay, I wanna make sure I put my used parts over here. This is your emulsion tube, I think they call it. Yeah, so we'll take this guy and clean it out real good. It looks like they have new screws, or new springs, rather. Yeah, we're gonna take all these out. 
you take this uh, throttle cable guide out. Carburetor body here is really dirty. So I'm not gonna clean that in here. I'm gonna do like I did with the float bowl. I'm gonna take that out and clean it outside. All these screws, yeah, this one's throttle, throttle control. The one that's right up top here is your um, idle mixture screw, which I've heard is a lot of people will mess with that one thinking it's the um, idle speed screw and it's not. We're taking all this off, boys. I think the guy said it was a T15. I don't know if I have my T15 out here in this kit. Uh, I don't think I've ever needed it for anything on the bike. Usually my, tool, my tools only make it into the bag. Tools only make it into my bag if I've ever used them on anything. I use John Maxwell's guide for making a tool kit and then I kind of add things or take out things as, as we don't need them. But um, T15 has never been something that we needed. We get that O-ring out. Yeah, this thing needs some serious love, man. What size is this? Is it also a half inch? Maybe seven sixteenths. We got seven sixteenths here, Bubba. It is. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to figure that out. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Looks like we have new nuts and washers for that too. So I'm not too worried about it. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab this um, T15 that I believe this thing is. I'm gonna clean up this car body as, as best as I'm willing to. All right, now the sun uh, seems to have followed me over here, but uh, uh, this isn't as clean as had I, if I had an ultrasonic cleaner, but I think we can all agree that that's, uh, that's pretty clean. Here's your butterfly that came out of there, the rod, screws, yada, yada. Okay, we're gonna stick this bad boy on here. All right, we got these new nuts here. Should be a lock washer, there it is. All right, and then uh, I'm gonna throw a little blue Loctite. <laughs> we don't have to get crazy with Loctite. Whoop, like I just did. Okay, new nut, there we go. 7 sixteenths, lock her down, baby. Now this thing is gonna go in this way. Make sure I got that looking right. Yeah, your throttle guide's gonna go here, perfect. All right, I had to turn the camera off for a little bit because I was uh, was getting a little bit confused. So when you put this on, put the uh, put the tab for the adjustment screw aligned with the with the non beveled side, right? So this this big gap here is going to be closer to the beveled side. This adjustment tab non beveled side. A little trial and error before I figure that out. Now, if I was a real professional, if I was a good YouTuber, I would. Zoom in, let you guys see what I'm talking about here, but I've never claimed to be good. I just kind of do what I do. I'm gonna show you where that matters here in just a second. I'll slide this, the hook part of this spring into here. And then you got two sides here, gonna go on the short side. All right, now watch, I'm gonna mess this up again. Yeah, I'm already messing it up. Okay, so what I need to do here is make sure this tab, the spring tab spins around. I'm gonna wind this up while I'm pushing it Okay, well, I thought it was. There we go. And then I can pull it around the other side. So now we can check it exactly how it's supposed to be. Yeah, check your other spring tab here. Make sure it's set up there. Now you've got the beveled side uh, of this facing out like it's supposed to be. Okay, now we get to figure this one out. All right, well, suffice it to say that uh, I'm not going to take this apart just to show you guys again. Uh, but this, uh, it's, it's three parts. It's uh, this inner piece the spring and this outer piece. The flat part here goes behind the set screw. Like your set screw is gonna go in, uh, your set screw is gonna go in here. Uh, and you know that because here's the top of the carburetor here. This is where your throttle is gonna come through. It's gonna be your accelerator pump, screw, whatever. This flat part actually goes this way. And the, the spring has to go into this clip and to this clip here. But you gotta kinda have to put it on the outside one first slide it on and kind of rotate the spring as you get. There's probably a better tool for that, but um, this is the way that I figured it out. I did have to watch this one clip about, I don't know, eight times before I finally felt like I got it. When you're putting this thing together, um, these two holes here that go to the, um, I, don't, I don't know what to call that, flutter, whatever this is. There's a short side and a long side. Short side goes on the throttle end and the uh, long side goes through here 
uh, for the accelerator pump. Holy smokes. All right, so this end here is beveled a certain way. See, if the throttle opens, what side is it open to? So it's gotta go. Well, since we know this to rotate close comes this way, I'm looking for a bevel. All right, so it's gonna go in that way. All right, well, once I get this in here, it's gonna close this way. This beveled side is going up that way to catch, and the one on the other side is beveled the other way so it'll catch on that end. I'm gonna turn the camera off while I try to figure out how to get this thing through there. All right, now I might run out of battery here, but what we're gonna do, I've got these two little screws here. They're, um, I'm not gonna be able to get out of this weird sunlight slash shade. Put a little Loctite on there. I want Loctite on these. This is a very rattly motorcycle. And uh, we don't want those uh, vibrating loose, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna make these uh, plenty snug. All right, so even though the, um, the jets that I pulled off this thing were technically the right ones, um, I'm gonna use the new jets because if I'm going through all this trouble, yeah, I could probably clean those out, send this back and save myself some money. But if I'm going through all this trouble uh, to make sure this thing is right, why not just do it right? You know what I mean? All right, we're gonna put this 295, make sure I got that right. Yep, 295 is in here. Okay, this emulsion tube. Actually, let's spray this out a little bit. Actually dries pretty fucking quickly. So I'll we'll stick this in here. Okay, I think that is my, it's a 716 still. Nope. Is it a one half? Yep. And then we're gonna find my 72. Stick this little guy in here. All right, now we're gonna put this gasket on. Uh, it's gonna be pretty obvious which way it goes because this intermediate jet and this um, accelerator pump little thingy here only line up a certain way. Well, I guess all the screw holes too, but I think you get what I'm saying. All right, we're gonna try to wrap this guy around here a little bit. My guy I watched on the video used, a, um, used some grease probably would have been the smart thing to do, but your old uncle uh, never claimed to be smart. Then this new little guy here goes in here. Oh, that's why this side is flat. Okay. Makes sense now. Makes sense now. You know, when I was putting this together, I wondered why this flat side wasn't against the adjuster screw. Makes sense. The actuator rod needs to be on that. Okay. All right. She looks like she's ready to go back together now. Uh, we measured the float pole a couple times, got all this put together. Got the accelerator pump thing on. We've got this O-ring that uh, I don't think was on there right to begin with. Okay, this needs to go through here. That needs to go through there. That needs to go through there. Boom. Hey, we got her together. How about that? All right. Now we're going to take our screws. I'm going to put this long screw in first. Now, I do wish I had two of these because uh, my particular carburetor has a spacer between this and the throttle body. That spacer also has an O-ring. I don't want to tighten that down yet. Beautiful, look at that. Starting to look like a carburetor again, huh? All right, we're gonna put this enrichener back on. Okay, get this, I uh, want the new spring. Here we go. There we go. All right, idle enrichment screw is gonna be here. I hope that's the right one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, idle speed screw is gonna be this uh, longer one. Put that together. That's definitely gonna go over here where the uh, throttle is, right? All right. And the other one is the uh, accelerator pump screw. All right, last thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna refit this uh, throttle cable guide, uh, which is gonna go up here. There we go. It's got like a little uh, guide tang on it. Look at that. All right, my friends, we have a rebuilt SNS Super E. Is it going to work? Don't know. I uh, sure hope so, man. We put in a lot of work on this thing. I learned a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these screws to the factory recommended settings. All right, idle mix screw. We're going to set these up here. Idle mix screw. I've got this thing all the way in. He said lightly seated. We're gonna do uh, one and a quarter turns out. So we're gonna do this in, uh, in half increments. There's a half, there's one, and then there's a quarter. I need to um, get this idle speed screw where it's up against the, um, 
idle. All right, there's lightly seated. So a half a turn, I'm gonna put that in there like that, All right? Okay, there's half a turn. And then the accelerator pump, which is on this side. All right, there's as soon as it touches. So I need to do two turns. We're gonna do half increments. One, half, one, half, two. All right, so she is adjusted to factory settings. We're gonna slide this O-ring on, make sure that's seated in there. And my friends, we have a rebuilt carburetor and factory reset. All right, y'all, we're uh, we're back out by the bike and um, I'm not gonna do every step. I'll, the focus of this video was the carburetor rebuild. I am gonna put it back on the bike, but right now we've got the intake off. I don't know if it's called a throttle body intake. I, I, I don't know. Um, I know I'm ignorant. Some people sometimes comment, oh, you must be new at this. Yeah, I am new at it. But a couple things I wanna show you. Here it is with the uh, intake off or throttle body or whatever it is. And a couple videos I watched, they said you absolutely have to have a, a, a sawed quarter inch Allen. You don't, at least not on this bike. I used, um, I used this and then I used this wrench for a little leverage. I was actually able to bust every single one of those bolts loose. Now on the SNS, what's nice is may, maybe Harley did it stock too, but the, the, the back flange bolts or the flanges are cut out in a notch. So you don't have to take those all the way out, which is really nice. You just tighten them down. But I do want to show you, um, like I said, I'm not going to show every little step here. Before I put these new seals back on, I want to show you these old seals. Yeah, you got some pretty significant dry rot and uh, they pinch these pretty bad. But uh, one of the surprising things, this looks like some sort of goo or something on here. And I always saw that, uh, but it wasn't until I took this apart that I kind of figured out what they did. Uh, they must have known they had some sort of intake leak at some point. And this looks like some sort of sealant that they squeezed in there. And honestly, they probably had the intake leak because these seals were um, in such bad shape. So I want to clean these up. I'm not. I'm not worried about getting the uh, goo off of the, the body itself here. I definitely want to make sure this is nice and clean so that way the seals the seals can seal inside of there. And then uh, once we get that done and put back on, I'm going to put the carburetor on. I'm not filming any of that. I'm just going to have it on. Just know that the carburetor has been rebuilt. That's going to be done by the time we come back. And uh, we're going to start it up for the first time. Okay, so hopefully everything goes as planned. And uh, one way or the other, we're going to see you then. All right, boys and girls, here she is. I've got the carburetor rebuilt, reinstalled. Uh, throttle cables have been adjusted. I just noticed that my return cable uh, guide there is um, not exactly how I want it. So we'll address that when we come back. Um, I did install off camera. I did install a um, new oil pressure switch. Man, that's really tight to get into. And uh, now I've got some new woes. Uh, I have an oil light again, which, yay! But it doesn't go off until uh, we get to higher RPM. So um, I talked to Shelby. Shelby said, uh, could, be a, could be an air bubble in the system. Anyway, you guys aren't here for that. And Richner on. Here we go, we're in neutral. Yeah, it's too high of RPMs for that oil light. The idle is too low, but we don't want to set anything until we warm this thing up. So we're going to head out, ride it for about 20 minutes. How about let's turn the fuel on? Yeah, that's about the RPM that she wants. Uh... Oh, there goes the oil light. All right. We're not going to get too crazy on the uh, on how much gas we give it because uh, nothing is set right. <laughs> nothing at all is set right. It's just been rebuilt. All right. So the oil light is off. Here, let's... Um... Oh, there it goes. Yeah, that might be wiring, man. I'm going to tell you, this bike sounds a heck of a lot healthier now that I've uh, rebuilt this car. All right, so I'm gonna hit this ride up. I don't wanna talk too long on this video. Uh, that can be distracting. 
I've already talked a little bit too much about this oil pressure thing. So um, I'm gonna get this ride in and I'm gonna see you guys back at the house. We're back in the garage and uh, that oil pressure light is really bugging me. Uh, I came home and I troubleshot some uh, oil levels. I think it was, it was too low. So I added some oil and it was too high and I took some out and now we're perfect, but still can't get that oil light off. So I'm not going to uh, finish tuning the carb on this video. Uh, if you're here all the way to the end of it, sorry about that, <laughs> but it is what it is. I'm actually gonna go get an oil test um, gauge kit uh, from Harbor Freight or something and uh, try to figure this out. And um, yeah, so thanks for coming along for this video. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot. Even while rebuilding the carburetor, I had uh, I was referencing videos. Uh, I'll try to remember to link all those down below here. So uh, hopefully we get this bike uh, up and running in good shape soon. I'm kind of tired of messing with it. I'm ready to just ride it. So yeah, until next time, we'll see you later.